Good morning, everybody. Friday, July 26, or Saturday, July 27, I guess. And our little black bull, our heifer bull, has got a bad right front foot. He's a little bit swollen. I went out and checked on cows, and I found him all by himself. So we walked him up here this morning, got him in the barn. I got to make my head gate bigger so he'll fit. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens. He's going to be staying in the corral for a couple of days. So let me get to work at making this head gate bigger, and I'll bring you guys back after. Yeah, you can see he's favoring that right front foot. So we smoked him with 45 C's of uh, OxyVet. It's like a liquamycin 200 or 300. Uh, and then soaked his foot in uh, copper tox. I kind of dug around in there and I can't see nothing in his foot or nothing like that, but he's definitely sore on it. That copper tox is probably burning if he had a crack in there. I didn't notice any cracks or anything. And so, but he can stay around here. We've got lots of grass in these crowls that he can munch on. We'll give him a couple of days and go from there. Getting rid of your spider webs, cobwebs. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah, it's gross. There's lots up here. Them okay. big, what do they call them, wood or wolf spiders or whatever. They're big bastards, I know that. They can get real big. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys, well, CP and I just got back from checking our hay fields. The one field is still a little bit too wet. The thicker stem has got too much internal moisture on it. Uh, to the top of the plant, where it's thinner, and the leaf, that's way too dry. You just pick it up and it falls off, but then the stem is too thick and it has too much moisture in it. But the wind is howling like a bastard. The first field that we cut is way too goddamn dry, so I guess we'll be bailing all night. We need to pick up some parts, so we're gonna take off to the city uh, get our parts and uh, then we'll get back home and we'll be in the field later on today that's just how she goes anywho I'll let you guys go we'll talk to y'all later alrighty guys well nine o'clock at night oh not a good thing to be doing yawning right now Wake up. Um, there's the rig. I don't know, like, you know, this morning I probably could have been bailing. But instead of bailing, I was walking a bull in from the bush pasture so that we could treat him and save his friggin' leg, right? The foot rot. Then by the time we got that dealt with, got the tractors fueled up and switched over to different equipment like baler and rake with the wind blowing, then it got too damn dry. So maybe I should have went and raked and bailed this morning, dealt with the bull this afternoon. But then this afternoon I went to made it to Regina to get the parts that we need for when we go back cutting. Uh, I guess I could have went to Regina tomorrow to get parts. I don't know. But we also had a celebration of life this afternoon for a buddy of mine. His father passed away back over the winter. So, yeah. So here we are, going out, 9 o'clock at night. We're going to do some raking. It's going to be a little too dry when we get there to start. 
but as the evening progresses, it'll toughen up and it'll be prime conditions. And if I get too damn tired, then I just say, fuck it. And I go back tomorrow morning and do some more in the morning. Simple as that, right? Holy shit. There's the bar. The barley. The barley. No, we did not cut it yet. I got to get on that right away, but with 150 acres down right now, I really don't want to be chopping down any friggin' barley. Anyways, let's get to the field. Talk to you guys when we get there. Alrighty guys, well, we've kicked three bales out already, but I want to show you something. See that pile of chaff? I know it's hard to see, it's kind of dark. There's CP. She's going. I'm a going. Um, it's still pretty fucking dry. But as the evening progresses, it'll get a lot better for moisture. And we won't be pounding it out so bad. That's the idea. So if CP keeps rocking and rolling, doing what she's doing, um, She'll probably be done raking here in a couple of hours, and I'll be left by myself, obviously, because I'm not going to be able to go as fast as she is. But this is bale number four already. So, yeah, we're just going to try getting as many rolled up as we possibly can and uh, see how it goes. Anyway, talk to you all later. That's another one for me. And there be CP. T6050 New Holland and a Coon SR112 G2 or Generation 2 speed brake. But she's saying she could only do about five and a half mile an hour. She doesn't feel comfortable going faster than that. But yeah. She's leaving me in the dust because uh, I got to stop to tie off every couple hundred yards. We're bailing 28 feet out of crack here. And not that that's a bad thing. It sure makes uh, filling the bale a lot nicer. With a heavier swath. And it's dry. I wish it was, uh, I wish we were in the friggin' mid 20s for how dry it is. Got a pile of chaff. But my cows will be coming in here, eh, October ish, end of September, maybe. So they'll be cleaning up on that chaff, if not the deer will. Anyway, I think that was bale 17 or 18 already, and we've only done like four swipes. The wind today got pretty friggin' crazy out here, and it blew the swaths around. So we're not quite getting 100% of it because it blew the swaths around but regardless uh, we're getting we're getting pretty much all of her Any that's anybody that's bailed monster swaths knows that uh, you always leave a little bit behind. Anyways, let you guys go. Yammer later. Alrighty, guys. Well, we've made 51 bales so far, and we just hit the halfway point. CP's tractor is back there. You see this little bit of swath up here? 
That's from the wind blowing the swath all over the goddamn place and the rake's not a quite wide enough to grab it all. Anyway, I brought enough twine out here with us so that I could make basically about 75, 80 bales and we've made 50 so far just over so CP went home to grab another box of twine because I might not have enough because I'm just getting to the halfway point right now and uh, I think it's just after 11 o'clock we've been bailing for just under two hours so that's not bad 51 bales in just under two hours that's like 25 bales an hour since we're tying with friggin twine tying with twine it takes friggin like 45 seconds I think 48 seconds to tie a bale with twine and if I was doing net it would be like three maybe five but from the time you open the tailgate and close the tailgate the tie it could be like five seconds so when you add up all those that extra 40 seconds per bale it adds up to a, being a lot faster. But all in all, being able to bail 28 feet or two swaths in at one time, that really speeds up the bailing process versus single swaths. But anyways, just my own two cents. We are still tying with twine, so this is what we're doing. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Let's see what happens by the time we get done this field. Talk to you then. Alrighty guys, well I stopped here and uh, putting twine in and I just hop, happened to figure, well fuck, you know, might as well check the machine over, right? Like, why not? I'm stopped, I'm out of the tractor. It's been bailing good, I haven't had any issues. Uh, blah 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 but why not check the machine over and go here there we go that's not good yeah we got a blown up bearing how about that eh cocksucker everything was going so good that tire's not exactly great. She's separating on the inside. And that's a newer skin. That's a newer fucking Adidas, that one. So, I'm not going home to change balers out tonight. I'll do that in the morning if I don't have a bearing for that son of a bitch. I might have a bearing for it, but we'll swap bearings in daylight, not in the dark. It's not overly, what's really surprising is how that bearing, yeah, it's hot, but it's not, it's not super hot. Like, I could goddamn near touch it by hand, barehanded. So, I guess running out of twine. Sending CP home to get twine was a small blessing in disguise. Anyway, I'll tie this in and uh, then we're going to call her quits for the evening. Talk to y'all later. Just cooling it off here. No point in it getting super hot. It is steamy. I'm 
And that's why I got a fucking 10 liter jug of water on either side. There to be. She's not steaming no more, so we're good to go. Lovely. Later. Have a good night, guys. Alrighty, guys. How the hell are you doing this morning? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um. Yeah, as you saw last night, we blew that bearing. So instead of continuing, obviously, friggin' stop all operations and uh, let's get things fixed, right? And since there is no rain in the forecast, we're going to fix this baler instead of hook up to the other one. So I'm on my way. It's Sunday morning. It is 9 a.m. Uh, Jerry at Mazer Group just phoned me and uh, he just pulled into the office. So he's the after hours guy this weekend. So he's got a couple bearings set aside for me and we're on our way to get them. We're going to get this sucker fixed up and this way the reason for two I got a spare. We got lots of bailing to do in the future here yet, so you never know. These goddamn bearings nowadays, it doesn't matter where you get them from, but 99% of them are all built in China or Japan. It's low quality bearings and they are they seem to be blowing up constantly. Anyways, that's what's going on. We're going to get a couple of new bearings and we'll get back and get it fixed. Talk to you later. Alrighty guys, well, it's not as terrible as one might think. Um, lots of guys have had, it could have been a lot worse, where we blew the fucking, not just blew the bearing, but caught the baler on fucking fire, or something crazy like that, right? So... Tree quarters, tree quarters, tree quarters. I'm not seeing a tree quarters. And my wife just took off with my truck. There's the tree quarters. And that's the baby right there. So I got the one part of the bearing off already. It's right there. Just kind of pried it off, wiggled it off with a heel bar. So now we're going to work at buzzing the housing off because it got damaged. I did buy bearing with housing the whole nine yards. When you want it to come off, it won't. When you don't want it to come off, it will fall off. That goes on there. that and CP's got the new bearings in the truck there we go she just ran home because I said yeah we when I was first fighting with it I said we might need a fucking bearing puller but as it turns out we don't plus she locked her tractor and forgot the keys at home so she had to go home for that too I guess, realistically, I did not need a housing because that's the outer race for the bearing that's 
all fucked up in there. Eh, whatever. So I gotta file this. See, it's rough there. So we'll get to work at filing that until she gets back. And go from there. Talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys, so here's the new bearing. And these, when you buy the complete kit from New Holland, you can get just the bearing. But then you gotta buy the bearing. And you gotta buy the collar. They come separate. Or you buy housing, bearing, and collar all in one piece. But you still have to install your own grease nipple or buy grease nipple extra. In this case, the grease nipple is fine. I just tested it. This is a Fafner bearing made by Timken. And if I remember correctly, all Timken shit comes out of China. So how long it's going to last, I don't know. But anyway, when you're putting these on, you got your grease nipple there. Make sure that you don't put it on like that. Or like that. Or like that. Make sure it's like that. So when it's in the housing here, the grease nipple will be sticking out that way. So I got to tap him into position, then get this some bitch up here. So yeah, fun, fun. Let's get her done. Get your collar on, give it a couple of good wax. When I'm tightening them, I go, uh, basically clockwise and tighten counterclockwise whether that's right or wrong some guys say it depends on the direction the roller turns but that's just how I do it then lock in your set screw this guy and 99% of you out there, I'm sure, know how to change a friggin' bearing. Some of them are, can be a real pain in the ass, especially those big drums, the core formation rolls, those can be a pain in the butt. But, <clears throat> there, got a crack right there. But I don't think it's going to be too big a deal. I'm just going to leave him alone. Anywho, there. Bearing is installed. So. I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to get this sucker closed up. The other big thing to watch for, guys. One, when you go to do a job like this. Lock your pressure for your belts. So there's no pressure on the belts. And... Lock your tailgate so the fucker doesn't risk falling down on you. Also, check your width. Make sure that your roller didn't shift out, okay? And so, just a couple of reminders for anybody, because you don't want you don't want to get it in there and then find out, oh fuck, we didn't get it. The roller set right, and you're taking it all apart again. So, anyways, that bearing is in. Hopefully it's not too dry and I can get some more baling done. Talk to you later.